Hey guys, it's Dave. Welcome to another video. Today I wanted to talk to you about a very important topic. It's one that I've been thinking about on and off since I first started researching Rocket Lab ages ago. And I'm still trying to formulate an opinion on this, but basically what I want to talk to you about is Starship and how this new vehicle built by SpaceX could impact the entire space and launch industry in the future, as well as Rocket Lab. Now, I am a Rocket Lab shareholder. I'm going to talk a lot about the potential capabilities of Starship, but don't let that make you think that I'm now suddenly bearish and I'm selling my Rocket Lab. I'm really not. One of the main reasons I'm so confident in the company is actually not its launch at all, but its space systems and space applications lines of business that they're looking towards in the future, where they will build, operate, and uh, launch their own satellites and satellite constellations. I think that's where the real money maker is in the future. But launch is still a big part of the puzzle. And of course, Starship will have an impact on the launch market in the future if they are successful. What really brought this issue back into focus for me today was that I recently watched an interview between Elon Musk, CEO of SpaceX, and Jay Leno, who does a show called Jay Leno's Garage, where he took a tour of the Starbase and Starship manufacturing facility down in Texas, Sp talked a lot about the Starship and the plans for this new launcher. Before I dive into that interview though, I want to point out a few things. First of all, I know Elon is a very divisive figure. A lot of people absolutely hate him and everyone is welcome to their own opinion, of course. A lot of people love him and think he's doing important work for the future of humanity. I'm not really going to talk about his character or talk about him as an individual in any way. All I want to talk about is the numbers he's saying in terms of the capabilities of this new Starship and its launch cadence and how it may affect the industry. I don't really want to get into personal attacks here either way. So let's try to keep it civil in the comments, whether you like him or hate him, it's all fine. I'm not going to talk about that either way. Next up, before we dive into the clip, I'd just like to show you a quick chart showing the Starship compared to some other launch vehicles, including Rocket Lab's rockets. Now, uh, this is a chart showing various rockets and the amount of mass they can send to low Earth orbit. We can see on the left, the smallest is the Rocket Lab Electron Launcher. This is really a small launch vehicle dedicated for small satellites, putting them into a precise orbit. So it's uh, only about 300 kilograms to low Earth orbit, and that's kind of its niche. Next, we have Neutron, which is a medium launch vehicle as opposed to a small launcher. This can launch from 8 tons to 13 tons into orbit, depending on whether it's return to launch site or, or landing downrange. After that, you have Falcon 9, which is actually even larger. A lot of people think Neutron is really a direct competitor to Falcon 9. In some ways it is, but the Falcon 9 can launch more mass into orbit. It can go up to 22-ish uh, tons to low Earth orbit. And then, of course, the Starship is an absolute behemoth. It will be the largest rocket ever to launch into orbit at 100 tons to orbit. And that you can see from the diagrams, the size of it absolutely dwarfs the Electron. It is an insane sized rocket. It's like launching a massive skyscraper into the sky. It's crazy to see. I hope to see it myself one day. Um, anyway, this is just to give you a perspective on the sizes of these different rockets and how much stuff they're actually sending into orbit. And also, I just want to point out the fact that this giant starship here on the right, Elon at least claims the plan is to be able to launch it for as cheap or cheaper than the Electron on the left, that little one over there. I don't think they'll ever get quite that cheap personally. That's just my opinion. But uh, in any case, I don't think Electron should be too badly impacted by Starship because they're really, for those small satellites, uh, putting them into specific orbit, whereas Starship is a massive heavy lift launcher. So I think Electron will be okay in the future launch industry, but I am curious about Neutron and how it will fare in an industry where Starship also exists. Let's dive into Elon Musk's interview with Jay Leno, where he talks about the planned capabilities of Starship. So we're gearing up to make one of these per month, and then within a few years, be making one of these every three days. As long as one is not breaking the laws of physics, right. uh, it can be done. And how, how many of these would you test before you do human cargo? I think we'd have hundreds of flights before we did Oh, people. okay, yeah. hundreds, okay. Yeah, probably hundreds. But when you're building one every three days, that's 
that's going to happen pretty quick. And each one that we build can be launched daily, wow. uh, if, if not multiple times a day. Okay, so that was a pretty short clip, but it really can all be condensed down into a couple points. One, they're looking to eventually be able to build one of these giant rockets every three days. So that's extremely quickly, extremely ambitious. That's actually a lot faster than Rocket Labs pumping out those little electron rockets. Number two, they think that these rockets will be able to be relaunched within a day of each other, or potentially even multiple times a day, something that's never been done before in the history of rocketry. So those two points combined with the fact of Starship's massive size and the sheer amount of stuff they can take into orbit. And next, I'd just like to go into how this could shape up with some calculations and charts. Before I dive into the charts and the data on this, though, please do take a second to hit subscribe if you haven't joined the channel yet. I'm really trying to get to that 1,000 subscriber mark. It'll make a big difference once we get there. You get offered a lot of new capabilities and uh, just trying to push through to that goal. So thanks for everyone who has subscribed. Now let's jump into some of the numbers around the Starship and Neutron launch vehicles. So when I started researching this topic, I really wanted to give a sense of scale of how big this shift is. And I think the best way to do that is to give you some data on the amount of payload that has been taken to orbit across the entirety of human history. So I did some research and some smart folks on Stack Exchange have actually created a script tracking every launch in the entirety of human history estimating how much payload was sent into orbit for each of those launches. And we actually have a pretty good estimate for how much mass has been sent to orbit since the beginning of the space age, back when Sputnik was launched into orbit from the Soviet Union all those years ago. Now, um, the number here for total mass to orbit in all time is 14,933,443 kilograms. This includes the International Space Station, all the other space stations, every launch that has ever happened. The estimate from uh, February of 2022 is that 14,900,000 kilograms. But let's look at what Starship will do if these um, numbers Elon quoted are anywhere close to being accurate. So the mass a single Starship launch can send into orbit is 100 tons, which is 90,700 kilograms. This means all the mass sent to orbit for the entirety of human history can be matched with 165 Starship launches. Not bad when you consider the fact that there's been thousands and thousands of launches in the history of human spaceflight. Okay, so now that we understand just how massive these Starships are and the fact that 165 launches of the Starship could exceed the entire previous output of humanity launched to space, in all time, let's look at this manufacturing cadence Elon mentioned. So he said they hope to hit manufacturing rate of one every three days. Assuming they did hit that rate, that means after one year of one every three days, they would have 121 starships in service. A second year, they'd have 242, third year, 363, fourth year, 484, all the way up to in year nine, they would hit his target of over 1,000 starships, 1,089 to be exact. Now, this won't be precise because obviously as they gradually spool up, they will be first creating them at a much lower rate, but this is just to kind of give an idea of scale, how many starships we're seeing in existence and would be continued to be made at this point. Each one of these starships could supposedly launch multiple times a day or once a day. So now I'd like to show you a chart. We said that after a year of manufacturing starships at one every three days, we'd have 121 starships. And these starships claim to be able to be launched every day. Now I'm not going to even estimate that because the numbers are just going to get so crazy I can barely wrap my mind around them. But what I am going to do is say they can launch one every 10 days. I think that's a bit of a more reasonable number, and it's just to illustrate the point. So each starship launches once every 10 days. You have 121 of them. Each can launch 100 tons into orbit. According to this chart, we are seeing that these 121 starships are absolutely dwarfing the entire output of humanity to space uh, many times over. And that's just 121 starships. This is just getting started. Now let's look at the next few years as we accumulate more and more starships into service, how much mass we're able to put into orbit compared to 
historically. Okay, so here you can really see now as we start to zoom out. In one year, we are already dwarfing all previous launches, and then when we get to 605 starships, the amount of launches just goes absolutely crazy. And then, of course, 1,089 after year nine of manufacturing at this rate, it's just even crazier. And this is only once every 10 days. If they really could do once every day, as Elon claims, those numbers, you multiply them by 10, you get a sense of just how insane it is. But let's bring this back to reality for a second here, because I have a lot of questions. One, uh, how do you deal with all the ground infrastructure for all these massive amounts of starships? They've got basically over a thousand skyscraper sized buildings you need to move around, store when they're not being launched, refuel with massive amounts of fuel, load up with payloads, and just land them. It's just an insane undertaking, if you ask me, just the ground infrastructure and fueling costs alone. In addition to that, we have to think, what exactly are they launching? Because sure, SpaceX has Starlink, and that is planned to be launched by Starship, but the total mass of Starlink will be nowhere near these numbers. So the only thing I can think of that makes any sense for having this many Starships is what Elon says the goal is, which is sending them all to Mars in an effort to colonize another planet. Now, of course, if we do that, they're not really competing with Neutron, which is good if you're a Rocket Lab fan. It also reminds me of what Peter said in a recent interview, saying that, you know, this is a business, we're running it as a business, everything has to make financial sense. Building this many starships and sending them off to Mars does not really make financial sense, so I don't really know how that can fly with SpaceX shareholders who are investing their money in this company to try and make a profit. Sending all sorts of equipment and people to Mars to try and set up a colony is not really a profit-making venture. Yes, we do have all sorts of constellations being planned from Amazon's Kuiper, uh, SpaceX's Starlink, uh, all sorts of other ones in the works. Go it's going to be a great age for global connectivity in the future as we have uh, a plentiful amount of satellites providing internet services, radio services, imaging, all sorts of things. And there will be many different niches for many different players. But I'm just trying to find, a I'm just trying to think about in the world of the future, if there really was this kind of capability, how does that affect a player like Rocket Lab? So if you ask Elon Musk in this future where starships are extremely plentiful and launching extremely cheaply, there will no longer be any need for his smaller rocket, the Falcon 9, and that one will eventually be retired from service. He thinks Starship will be able to launch so cheaply that it's going to eliminate the need for smaller class rockets. If you listen to Peter Beck, though, he had a question recently at their investor day about their Neutron rocket. It was kind of obliquely addressing this issue, and I think his answer was pretty interesting. So let's hear what he has to say. Um, so uh, what, what we're trying to build here is, is, a, is a platform that if we project forward and we look forward and we talk to all the customers, uh, it's a platform that, that, that we see very, to be very, very enduring in, in time. Yep, the, there might be other platforms that other companies develop for, for, for going to other destinations and doing other things, but this, this kind of class of launch vehicle has existed uh, since the beginning of time with Soyuz, and I don't see any time soon that it, it's, it's going to get phased out. So I'm not sure, like, I'm not sure we continue in a need to, to, you know, to chase rocket, um, rocket development. I think what we've proven that we're good at is, is, is finding a target market and, and, and executing on that target market and build, being, being able to be best in class in that, in that, in that target market. Um, and we're, we're always going to develop stuff. We're not going to stand still um, in any way, but we're, we only ever do stuff um, not, not because we have, uh, like Pete's got an internal passion to go and do something because they want to do something. It's like everything is, everything is a business-based decision. And the, the one thing I would say about Rocket Lab versus um, some of the other space companies out there, it's like uh, this is not a passion project. This is a business. And all the decisions that we make are, are around like exactly to your point, how do we re return value to, to the shareholders, to the company, uh, you know, and how do we have an impact to, to humanity? That's, that's the whole the whole. whole Point of it. Clearly, Peter expects that while Starship may in fact dominate the super heavy lift space in the future, that there will still be a niche for the medium launch vehicle, which has existed for many, many years, and he believes will exist for many, many years into the future. So that is comforting to hear. I do think Peter knows a lot more about the industry than I do, and he certainly thought about this. So even if uh, 
Starship is launching successfully. He, for one, believes that it will not displace the medium lift launcher market where, you know, you may have a satellite you want to get to a specific orbit and it makes a lot of sense to get a dedicated ride to put it in a specific location versus throwing it on a massive Starship with hundreds of other satellites. You can't get them all to a specific different location that way. I have a lot of questions. What exactly are they launching? Because sure, SpaceX has Starlink, and that is planned to be launched by Starship, but the total mass of Starlink will be nowhere near these numbers. So the only thing I can think of that makes any sense for having this many Starships is what Elon says the goal is, which is sending them all to Mars in an effort to colonize another planet. Now, of course, if we do that, they're not really competing with Neutron, which is good if you're a Rocket Lab fan. It also reminds me of what Peter said. This is a business. We're running it as a business. Everything has to make financial sense. Building this many starships and sending them off to Mars does not really make financial sense. So I don't really know how that can fly with SpaceX shareholders who are investing their money in this company to try and make a profit. Sending all sorts of equipment and people to Mars to try and set up a colony is not really a profit-making venture. So these are the questions I have, and I don't have all the answers for you. It's really just a thought experiment. I think it's important for all of us Rocket Lab investors to at least consider it. It's important to not just kind of get stuck in our own bubble on the internet where we talk with only Rocket Lab bulls and think about the other side of the debate. Uh, really take the bull and bear case into account. And basically the biggest point on the bear thesis I can find is Starship and how it will affect the launch industry going forward. Now, of course, as I mentioned before, Elon plans to be able to launch one of these for maybe two, three million dollars. I don't personally see that happen, whereas Electron is about eight million dollars right now. So theoretically, he could undercut Electron and launch a tiny small sat with this giant behemoth of a rocket. Another angle to think about is that you literally are not allowed to have a monopoly on any industry. The government will simply not allow it. It stifles innovation and ultimately is not even good for the company that has the monopoly as they can get complacent and stop innovating. So even SpaceX fans should not want SpaceX to be the only player in town when it comes to launch. You do want competitors pushing them to continue to improve into the future. So how will the government react if Starship is able to launch for these extremely cheap prices? Well, they certainly won't allow a monopoly to occur. How they go about preventing that, I'm not entirely sure. Whether they just give more contracts to other players such as Rocket Lab, whether they put some restrictions in place. But one thing I do know for sure is that we're not going to end up in a monopoly with only one company launching all rockets for the United States and the world. It simply will not be allowed to happen. So just to wrap up here, I just really wanted to highlight the scale of what SpaceX says they're going to do and really raise it as an issue for Rocket Lab shareholders to think about. We do need to think about the bear case as well as our own bull case. Don't just get stuck in our own bub. Important to examine our beliefs and challenge them to make sure we are correct. I'm still going to continue holding my Rocket Lab shares. I still think they'll ultimately be successful operating their own satellite constellations in the future as well as successful as a launch provider but it is definitely something to think about and i really welcome all your comments down below uh, let me know how you see the future of space and the future of the launch industry shaping up as we see starship and some of these new players enter the field thanks for watching guys i hope you enjoyed the discussion and i'll see you next time with another video soon.